Blog Talk Radio. All praises, all praises to our Elohim, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All praises to Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Holy Ruach, the Holy Spirit, our Mother, the Comforter. All praises to our Elohim. So, this week is yet another week to labor, uh, as Brother Man says, labor in the vineyard of the Most High. And this is where we are. This is what we've been doing. We've been putting in work for a long time. And it is reward. It is paying off, and the reward is sweet. We're starting to watch how the nations are beguiled, how the nations are falling, how even some of our own people who um, are just getting into this and maybe even been in this, but stuck in one part of this truth, are also being beguiled. And it's interesting because a lot of them are coming against us in a way that doesn't truly make sense, but yet it plays into the part or the hands of the nations. You know, Brother Judas has been dealing with the AI. You know, he's been going toe to toe like a heavy heavyweight boxer knocking knocking out AI. AI keeps getting up, but he keeps getting knocked out, and rightfully so. Because that's the nations, that's the Christians, that's the world's God. They want to be AI so bad that they would rather create an entity or a program that is full of lies than to deal with the truth. And people, you know, oh, you know, Jesus came for everybody. Well, that's not what was written. Jesus said that he's God. That's not what is written. Paul was, Paul, Jesus told Paul to, uh, to preach to the Gentiles. That's not accurate. That, that's not accurate at all. But in, in fact, it probably is more accurate for them, that other Jesus, right? That whole other doctrine. You got people who are saying, you know, uh, the, the doctrine has to, you know, they want to use, um, they want to use uh, Matthew 24 and 10, you know, they want to use it to their benefit, you know, and the gospel must first be published among all nations, right? They want to use that as their reason of being. They want to use that as, see, Christianity, excuse me, see, Christianity is going throughout the world. Well, if Christianity has gone throughout the world, because the rest of that is talking about how he's, how, you know, brother will destroy brother, um, you know, people, they will be hated for his name's sake. Christians are talking about love and forgiveness. You know, they are concerned themselves with the totality, the universality of a doctrine that has been squeezed into the scriptures for all to to believe that went all the way around the earth. Yet there has been no love. There's been no forgiveness. There has been no lawful intent. And because we have changed our um, mindset to bring it back to a melanated worldview, they are struggling because this melanated world view is what is um, bursting out every it's like it's coming out everywhere and they're struggling with that they want to be included but they can't necessarily be included because they don't show they they have not done the covenant I, I dare say covenant they have not done what Yahweh told them to do. And it was really simple for what he said. You know, he said, 
Thou shalt love the Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is likened unto it. Thou shalt love the neighbor, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? So let's see. Has the Christians under in their world, under their rule, loved the Elohim, loved the Most High, loved the Creator, the Prime Creator with all their heart? No. They love Jesus. That's just it. That's what they do. They love Jesus. He is a God. He they they go, well, you know, he's God. He said that he was God. Listen, he definitely has the essence of the prime creator to come into the physical, but he is not the prime creator incarnate. That's not what he was. And he said so. He says so. You know, so they don't love the creator with all their mind, heart and soul. They love Jesus with all their mind, heart and soul which negates the first commandment. So they, they, they've, they've, um, they've pretty much uh, done away with that, okay, that first commandment. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. Have they loved their neighbor as their, self, as their self? No. They have coveted it, destroyed, murdered, lied, cheated, and stole from their neighbor. Their entire existence not only did they do this thing, these things, their entire existence, they also changed times and laws. So now we have the lawless creating laws against us. And today, as we stand in great boldness with the power, with our power with us, behind us, in front of us, over us, underneath us, all around us, they're upset. They still want to be included. And look, they can be included as long as they cleave. They have to cleave to those that salvation is coming to. They can't cleave to the Pope. They can't cleave to Jesus or Jebus, as Brother Sly says. They can't do that. Matter of fact, they've already done that. And look at the plight, look at the sight, look at the world that they have ruled over. And for some reason, they want us to continue down the same vein of believing in a AI, artificial intelligence doctrine. And now it's all come out. That's what Brother Jude is showing us. He's showing us, what, what is he showing us? He's showing us that even the AI is a lie. So you've got the people, the programmers lying, programming a artificial intelligence to lie. So where are, there, where are they in the two greatest commandments? You know, they've done away with the law, but these are the commandments. Even the people who come over, these foreigners who come over into our land, who they've allowed to come into our land here at the end, uh, and coming from places where they are the bottom, coming over here now trying to still, well, trying to uh, get their comeuppance over us, they're finding it hard. They're finding it very difficult to do so. They're not looking at us trying to, these foreigners, they're not looking at us with respect. They're coming over being told, them Negroes, treat them, is, treat them bad. Keep them, keep them low. Try to get a row out of them. And it's not working. It's not working. And it's very evident that it's not working. Because the commandments now are in our hand. It's in our mind. It's in our body. And we're giving that to the Father, the prime creator. You know, you got people, oh, well, it's Yah. You got to say Yah. Listen, if, you, you know, the name is in you. 
So if you use the name, how whichever name you use, and now people get all of it, people get lost right here, right here when I say this. Whatever name you use, use it as long as you realize that it's not idolatry. That's why I cut out white Jesus. I don't even, you know, I'm not praying to white Jesus. I'm not meditating to white Jesus. I'm not meditating to lesser principalities either. My mind is on the prize, the highest being, entity. That's why I say the most high. The highest, the ancient of days, the prime creator, the greatest I am. Other people want to get caught up in the semantics of transliteration and, you know, because we're going to have a new language. So, I get that we want to understand, we, which we have to. We have to over enter and understand the the etymology of words, but we can't get hung up there. For those that are to be lesser, what is it to be to telestial? That's for those that you know want to be in a lesser level, telestial. Which means literally means lower or le- lower or lesser level of heaven or spiritual realm. You know, and or those wanting to be terrestrial, just wanting to control the earth. You know, I I personally am seeking celestial. Degrees. That's just me. And, you know, I study and I read, but a lot of this to me, for me now, is internalized. It's internalizing everything that I see through my through my five senses. It's internalizing everything now. And it's becoming very clear. It's becoming 5D. Like I can now see people's spirit. I can see the 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 resonance of their spirit on them, even before I deal with them. And even when they deal with me, they can they don't even when their resonance is low and they come into my presence, they are either they're going to be vexed by my uh, my celestial um, aptitude, or they're going to connect. So, you know, trying these spirits, trying all these people's spirits, black, white, blue, pink, green, yellow, all of them. Because we can't be caught up believing that everyone that looks like us, looks like me, is for my betterment. No. I am for my betterment. Me. And people, you know, get caught up. It's y'all, you lying. You See, that's a wicked spirit. These are people who come in to distract, to beguile, to deceive. And yet they impose their madness onto us so that we can then, so that they can then project their madness onto us as well. And then within our retaliation of reprojecting their madness back onto them, they get upset. They get vexed. It's just like what Brother brother Judah was saying, uh, the, the I think it was last night, about um, when he was asking the AI these questions, and the AI said, uh, well, you know, I apologize, but you know, can I help you imagine something else? And 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 when that when he read that, it struck me that's the deal. That's their vain imagination. They've been running around, even within their AI, they have their AI trying to vainly imagine, vainly put forth an imagination that is a lie, vainly, just like they do. And it's okay because we see you. We see you world. 
We see you people in the world, all of you. Not one is innocent. And they go, well, neither you. You're correct. But yet I am I am dealing with my, Sister Pat, shadows, Brother Moriel's self-reflection, self-conviction, self-correction. I'm dealing with that myself. That stays top of mind. Because I got to keep the moat, the boat out of my eye as, whilst I am judging the the other people to stay away or gravitate to. Only God can judge me. Are you a fool? Is that what you want? It will better suit you to allow your brethren to judge you, to correct you, to bring wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. As opposed to get the father's judgment. That don't even make sense. That's what these Gentiles have done to themselves. That's what these heathens have done to themselves. And somehow they want us to continue to believe in their madness. Because their madness is written all over their face. It's like it's tattooed all over. Madness, great stupor. Madness, great stupor. And if nothing else will show this, is their politics and their politicians. You got people on the left and the right, wicked as hell, mistreating people, lying and killing. All for what? All for small gains of paper money that they're $100 trillion in debt over. Reparations? I don't want no reparations from them. They can't pay me enough. And I'm and certainly they can't pay us enough in, 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 in bulk. They, they don't have the resources. The whole world doesn't. Russia says, come over to our nation. We can make this happen for you. We can take care of you as long as you do these three things. Well, to me, that's not for us to do, even though some will. To me, that's for the northern army to do, the northern people, the nations. That will be their last hurrah to get over whilst the father is cleansing our land from them. And I know, hey, this land, this land, I don't own it. I'm not looking to own it all. What I'm looking for is the land to be at peace. I want the land at peace because when the land is at peace, we're at peace. So this doesn't have anything to do with, you know, me wanting land so that I can build this castle. No, I want the, because the land is not at peace. The air is not at peace. The elements are not at peace because the heathens rage. Because the land, the air, the sea, the world has been given into the hands of the wicked. And people get caught up because we are we are commentary, we are commenting for our scripts. They go, oh well, the, you know, it, if it's you know the only the can, canonical books. Are, wait, time out before you start going down that rabbit hole of canonical books. I must have a question answered. This is reasoning out of matter. Who gave the canonical thieves the authority to canonical size stolen scripts? See, that's the question that needs to first be raised with these people. Well, you say that uh, the church is now Israel through your supersessionism and your replacement theology. You say that, you know, Jesus loved, wants everybody in and all that. But who gave the authority to you to say these things? Is it the celestial or is it the terrestrial? Which one? Because to a heathen, 
Gentile, a nation person, an idolater, they're not going to care as long as they're gaining, as long as they're prospering. And that's the funny of the whole thing. They Their whole dogma is about prosperity. Their whole dogma is about, uh, you know, no works. Their whole dogma is about self, self, uh, selfishness. And then they throw in Jesus who says, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. Yeah, they know what they do. They absolutely know what they do. That's a transliteration. And that's what I use when I'm having, when I'm in the comments of these people who want to start using scriptures and everything, it's a transliteration. Because see, personally, the way I look at myself and what I do and, and what I bring is I, I'm, a, I'm a scriptural historian because I want it to apply to the story. That's how we've been proving who we are through history and scriptures. You've got some of us who just want to deal with the scriptures. It's, a, it's, it's an infallible word. It, it's, it's a, the canonical, the canonical, only 60, only 66, only 80. you got some of us like that, some of our own people. And, again, they want retaliation, too, because they want to find justification in their own works themselves. I'm not looking for my own justification. Personally, I'm looking for justification for the group, justification for my ancestors, justification for my own actions, justification for righteousness, justification for the Father's will to be done. That's why I look at the land and I say, you know, dang, I feel bad for the land. Look at how, look at how they use it. Look at how they have misused the land. Look at what they, how they pollute the air. Just like in Louisiana, they decided that this, this judge, this demented judge, said that he, he took the law away from uh, corporations polluting so-called black neighborhoods, communities, meaning that the corporations don't have to tell them nothing. They can just go and pollute those neighborhoods in Louisiana, which honestly is the heart of our land. That's the Nile, that Mississippi. Oh, the Tigra and the, and the Nile and the, uh, uh, you know, it's all over there, over in the three parts. Well, not necessarily. That's why that's why it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting to watch, and I might have said it's not the no. This is why I'm a little tired, but nevertheless, you know what I'm saying. It's interesting how people don't want to acknowledge other alternatives to the to the story to the Eurocentric worldview. They stay. They they don't like the Eurocentric worldview. They don't like the Eurocentric ideology. But yet they stick to. They they hold. They they want to keep some of that worldview, and try to make it fit into a melanated worldview. And it don't work that way. Just like the transatlantic so-called slave trade. We know there's two sticks, and they got to be in captivity together. We know that there's two kingdoms, but everybody, again, want to be from Judah. They want to be from two tribes. Then you got one, and you got some, oh, I'm Levi. But what about Ephraim? You know? Like, there's so many of us. We can't all be from the same tribe. We can't. Oh, well, everybody is in Africa. Well, not necessarily. Of course, some of the Judeans were over there and some of the Benjamites. Surely, that's your Negro land. 
Surely that's your Negro land. But the ten tribes? No, they're not there. No, not at all. They're over here. They were over here. Why would we just count all of the megaliths, all of this land that is of milk and honey, to just give it up to Columbus and the Europeans? That doesn't make any sense either. That's part of the, the, the commandments. Our law, don't covet. Don't covet someone else's lands. Why do you think they're coveting this land? Why do you think they want this land? Because it's ours. It's the richest land. Not Africa. Certainly Africa has many riches on it, many minerals, many resources. Certainly it does. But not like the Americas. Oh, you're crazy. Listen, the Naxa, the, the Nax, Naxa Valley, where the uh, the footprint of the gods, where nobody can go, has all of the earth's minerals, more so than Africa. Mounds of it, mounds of it. South America. The megaliths, South America. Oldest pyramids, North America. And when you look at the map of the Mormon map, oh, it goes into the Mormon. I don't know what he's talking about. When you look at the Mormon map that they did, that they drew when they got here and and started stealing our information and creating their religion, they show you where Jerusalem was over in the ten, in, in the ten, with the ten tribes over here. They show you, and guess where? Goes to Judas Point as well, Central America. It was Guatemala. And that makes sense, centrally located, right there between the two massive continents, the two massive islands, south, north, right in the middle where everybody can get to. Makes sense. Jerusalem. And this was all of Zion, all the lands. What was in the three parts was just called Judea. They came over here, got the information, realized the information connected to that, created a Jerusalem over there where they go to a wailing wall. And there's no stone left upon itself in Central America, Guatemala, Jerusalem. But somehow they've got some stones stacked on top of each other where they go and they demonstrate, demonstrate themselves like they doing something against the wall. An abomination. But some next right down the street from a from a uh, from a rock. They fighting over a rock, a dome. Let's put a dome up. That's not in the desert. That's not the land of milk and honey. That's not Zion. Moreover, there's massive mountains in the Americas. Massive. Machu Picchu, massive. That's the deal. Like, we have to start realizing that the historical piece of it weighs heavier right now than the scripts do. Why? Because the scripts have been transliterated. They have been changed. That's why the Holy Spirit had to come to us to give us understand, understanding of our word. That was given to us. But in order to be able to find balance in it, we have to also have our history. And if we put them together, it is the sword. Because that word is strong. It's proven. It's fact. There's no delusion. But when you just, when you separate the land or rather, when you separate the so-called America's land and make it of no consequence or inconsequential to the lands over in the three parts, then things don't seem to add up. History 
begets a mystery, begets our mystery. Because now we just are African. We're just a continent. The Africans, I, I, I got Nigerian friends. They don't call themselves African. They are Nigerian. They are Ghana in. Now, some are South African. They'll say South African. But they're not saying, yeah, yeah, we're all African. No. It's not what they do. Moroccan. Libyan. Why we got to be African? That doesn't make sense. That's half-ass storytelling, which that means that it's lies. When, in fact, the same people who told us this, they say they're clearly French. You know, they don't say World War, just all European. Even when I went to um, to Germany, they said uh, to get through customs, it was uh, Commonwealth European, which then they broke down all of the nations that could go through here. And those that are not part of the European continent, they had to go this other way. And it takes it takes a lot longer. The same as they do here. So everyone has their own country, their own nationality. So like me, my ethnicity is Hebrew. I don't care what people say. That's none of their business. My ethnicity is Hebrew. My race is human. Period. That's why they cut us off, because they were like, well, you ain't human. You are black. And now we're going to be white, but we're mankind. On the slick, they tell you they're mankind. But we were three-fifths of a human. Well, they were mankind. They've been mankind the whole time. And somehow, somehow our being has um, vexed them in its awakening. Because now we're saying, you guys don't get a chance to tell us who we are. You don't get a chance to tell us who we are. No more. Or no more. And because of that, they're vexed. Now they're doubling down trying to talk about, well, hey, it's for everybody. Everybody can get down. Everybody is part of this. It's universal. Everybody. He loves everybody. He forgives everybody. No. No. That's not true. That is just not true. So let's read some uh, scriptures here. Which one am I going to start with? Let's start with, um, let me reiterate something right quick. The scriptures will be their conviction, but their history will be their judgment. Okay? So we're going to start with Alma. Alma 41. Here we go. And now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the restoration of which has been spoken. For behold, some have rested the scriptures and have gone far astray because of this thing. And I perceive that thy mind has been worried also concerning this thing. But behold, I will explain it unto thee. I say unto thee, my son, that the plan of restoration is requisite with the justice of the Elohim, for it is requisite that all things should be restored to their proper order. Behold, it is it is requisite and just, according to the power and resurrection of Yahweh Shai, that the soul of man should be restored to its body, and that every part of the body should be restored to itself. And it is requisite with the justice of the Elohim that men should be judged according to their works. Er, let's slow down. Now, I I believe that the Christians say you ain't got to work. It's only faith. 
for this, and it is requisite with the justice of the Elohim that men should be judged according to their works. And if their works were good in this life, and the desires of their hearts were good, that they should also at the last day be restored unto that which is good. And if their works are evil, they shall be restored unto them for evil. That only makes sense, right? Therefore, all things shall be restored to their proper order. Everything to its natural frame. Mortality raised to immortality. Corruption to incorruption. Raised to endless happiness to inherit the kingdom of the Elohim. Or to the endless misery to the intent or to the endless misery to inherit the kingdom of Asatan. And one on one, and one on one hand, the other on the on the other. The one raised to happiness according to his desires of happiness, or good according to his desires of good, and the other to evil according to his desires of evil. For as he has desired to do evil all day long, even so shall he have his reward of evil when the night cometh. Right? So, you know, if we're standing, if we're standing in boldness and righteousness in this day, day and night, then our reward will be righteousness. That's why it's important to reconcile one's own shadows or one's own self convictions for self corrections. It's it's a reward at the end. See, the Gentiles don't, they want their reward now, they, and then they want it later. They want their cake now, and they want to eat it. They want to eat it now, and they want to eat it later. No. You don't get to be a fool now, ignorant now, a liar, a thief, a murderer now, day and night, and think that that's, you're going to benefit from that later. Oh, well, I don't, I, I don't not like that all the time. Well, have you repented? But let's I digress. Let's keep moving. These are they that are redeemed. Wait, let me go back. Evil when the night cometh. This is six. And so it is on the other hand. If he hath repented of his sins, here we go, and desired righteousness until the end of his days, even so he shall be rewarded unto righteousness. I mean, it's what? It's the exact same thing. These are they that are redeemed of Yahweh Shai, yea. These are they that are taken out, that are delivered from the endless night of darkness, and thus they stand or fall. For behold, they are their own judges. Only God can judge me, whether to do good or do evil. Now the decree of God, or the Elohim, are unalterable. Therefore, the way is prepared that whosoever will may, will may walk therein and be saved. Make sense? Because the reward, what reward are you seeking? There'll be many that will say, well, I'm seeking the reward of righteousness, but they're doing wickedness. You can read their spirit that they're wicked. You can read their comments and see that they're wicked. You can read their eyes and see that they're wicked. Their, their intent and their agenda is wicked. That's why back in the day, before I die, I don't want to digress too far, but back in the day, my dad used to say to me, always look a person in the eye. And it didn't, you know, back then, I, you know, if I was doing something right, but if I was doing something right, I look him in the eye. And they could see that I was telling the truth. This is where we are now with these people. That's why they get on the comments and they go all in, go all in. They ain't got no posts. I mean, they ain't got no page set up. They got blank. They just got on a month ago, a week ago, onto YouTube or on the TikTok. And now they're a scholar talking behind because you can't look them in the eye. But because of the spirit that has been laid upon us, because of the dove, we now get to see their see the, their eyes, see them through their word. Because this is like Excalibur. They all can't, they're, they're trying to figure out how we, got the, how we got the sword out the stone. How did they get the sword out of our transliteration? And we're like, well, because we're the people. We're the kings. We're the priests. 
were the 12 tribes. And they're like, I don't know, I don't, you, y'all, y'all, y'all just black. You guys always want to be culture appropriate. No, we don't. We don't want to culture appropriate nobody's madness. Matter of fact, we're kicking off the cultural appropriation that you gave us, world. African American, black, all this naysay, bait, naysay, yay, say, by word madness. We're done with that. We're doing this for us. We're telling you who we are. To hell with what you're saying. We're telling you who we are. Like it or not. And now, behold, this is nine. And now, behold, my son, do not risk one more offense against your Elohim upon those points of doctrine which ye have hitherto risked to commit sin. Right? So don't be don't be out here being silly. Know that you're dealing with the truth. Don't be wayward like the Gentiles, like the heathen. Do not suppose, because it has been spoken concerning restoration, that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. Behold, I say unto you, wickedness never was happy. Wickedness never was happiness. And now, my son, all men that are in a state of nature, or I would say in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds of iniquity. They are without the Elohim in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of the Elohim. Therefore, they are in a state contrary to the nature of happiness. Boom. Look at the world today. They're not happy. These people are not happy. Overall, in the macro, in the totality of it all, they are not happy. Ish is trying to get out of Dodge, get out of, get out of Israel. Whatever the hell, you know, Israel is a person, a being. Israel is us, but they trying to run from Israel. You see how this works? It's metaphorically speaking, they trying to run from Israel to go hide elsewhere. These are gypsies. They've been doing this their entire time. They go places, destroy that, and then get out of Dodge quick or be kicked out. Now they get kicked out and then they have running into Thailand, and guess what? Thailand's like, we don't want you here. These are gypsies. And I ain't mad at them. I'm just calling a spade a spade because I want my inheritance. You played in my face with my inheritance, boasting, proud, talking doo-doo, telling us that we just black, in our, you know, on our left hand, talking in our ear about, you can do this, you can do that, I can get this money. The whole time, knowing who we are in, while we're in a state of decay. And now we're, not, we're no longer in a state of decay. And that decaying, that rotten smell, that rotten fruit is now on them. Look at them. Skedallying. Skedallying. Getting out of Dodge. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Flavor vision ain't blurry. Israelite Israelite vision ain't blurry. We see them. They're gonna leave. They're gonna go on carpet bomb and destroy these people. Destroy two hundred thousand people's lives taken. And now they rolling out. Scared? If you scared, say you scared. Don't sit here and act like you somebody that you not. Say you scared. Well, they ain't going to say it. They just going to show it in action. That's why they all got up there at the airport and skirted out of town. And for some reason, listen, I'm not, you know, this. I'm not against them. They got to do what they got to do. Every being on this planet has to do what they, he or she has to do. There is a reward for each individual based on their works, what they do. Ain't got nothing. Before I say that, it has to do with faith, but your faith has to be put into action. It has to be motion with that faith. You can't just say, yeah, I got faith, and then be running around scared in fear. So my question, well, I thought you had faith. 
I do, but I'm just scared. I think that they're going to blow the world up. I think that <clears throat> if we don't vote for Kamala, we're going to get we going to get Trump and he going to do a uh, project 25. What? They got no more authority. The power the power is with us. There's no more, like you can see they have no more authority. The authority has been taken, stripped from them. The problem is they have this charade, this masquerade going, and the people have been dumbed down. They're in a carnal state of existence, of unhappiness, and they are being beguiled. They are being to see the, the duplicity of the leadership of the Gentile nations is in full effect right now. Overdrive, matter of fact. Because they can't do, they can't, their reward is waiting for them. Their reward is waiting for them. And they they, they try to convince, they try to convince us, they try to convince the whole world that their reward is great. It's going to be happiness. If we can do this, if we can vote this, we can get this, and then everybody be happy. We will have less taxes. I'm going to take taxes away. I'm going to make energy efficient. What? You've had 2,000 years of just you haven't, and you're still trying to tell us you will. This is not, reason has come back into the True people of Yisrael, the true people. That's how. That's another. That's another reward for being righteous. You get reason. You get reason. That's a reward. The, the, you know, as time progresses, we're gonna look back and say, "Oh shoot, the Father gave us this and this and this." Yeah, I feel good. I'm in a state of happiness. Why? Because I have been. Trending righteously. And people, people go, oh, well, ain't nobody perfect. <clears throat> ain't nobody perfect. But if you're never trending for perfection, how then can you ever be perfect? If you never trend for perfection, you will never be perfect. That's like saying to an athlete, listen, I need you to work hard, but don't really work hard. Don't worry about it. You won't ever be perfect. But then being mad at that athlete for not being perfect. Ah, that dude's not that good. But the coach said that he didn't have to be. It's stupid. The reasoning, the logic is skewed because they're in a state of utter decay of bitterness. And and rightfully so. The bitterness of the world, like, and people won't say, well, it's a white man below. No, listen, the bitterness of the world comes to those who are unable to dwell in righteousness. So if there's some white dude, there's some Asian dude, there's some yellow, some green, some orange dude, I'm just using dude, I'm not, you know, woman, man, whatever, and they, their resonance is high, and they are in a state of happiness, nine out of ten times, and you can read the spirit to see and feel them out, nine out of ten times, they might just be part of us. They might be part of us. And people go, well, see, you you just want to be, it's got to be you. Listen, yeah, there's a remnant within the remnant. There's always a purging down. But they want to make it all seem like everybody's a campite. Everybody's a campite. No, we're not all campite people. Oh, everybody want to be Judah. No, we're not all wanting to be Judah. We're all wanting to be who we're supposed to be, and we won't know that until it's time to go through the gates. You know, my whole understanding and what keeps me in a state of happiness is knowing that I am part of the whole house of Yisrael therein. That's it. I'm not getting caught up in the in the idolatry of which tribe. What I do know is I am part of the tribes because I don't think like nobody. Never have. I see things completely different. I see things through a melanated world view. 
and then people get all upset. They go, la, 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 you got to, you, 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 you race it. No, I'm not race anything. I'm a human looking at the world through my world view, and I'm melanated. And then I use reason with that, and I say, well, there is by no stretch of the imagination that a Caucasian could have been in ancient times without being north, northward bound. And then when you, when you apply history to that, that makes sense. We can now see Denisovia, Neanderthal. We can see these things happening. We can see it play out. Oh, you raised you just being me. No, I'm not. This is his hyphen story. It has nothing to do with me. That's his story. Because the Eurocentric worldview doesn't even show me anywhere. I'm nowhere to be found. It's as if everything was happening in the European world and nothing in Africa, nothing in 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 in, uh, in the Americas, so-called the Americas, nothing in so-called Africa. But you got pyramids, you got all this writing, we got all this stuff, you got all these megaliths. But yet somehow only Europeans did that? That doesn't make sense. Somehow Europeans are Egypt, Egyptian? That doesn't make sense. Somehow the Egyptians are the Mayans? I mean, the Europeans are the Mayans? That does not make historically sense. There is no reason in that. Everything, nothing is as it seems. Nothing when it comes to a Eurocentric worldview. Nothing is as it seems. And that's not being mean. It's not being racist. Those are just historical facts. Or I should say, my historical fact. Because his story is his story. My story is my story. It ain't even a mystery no more. It's just my historical fact. Because I'm done. If people can't realize that the narrative has a bunch of holes in it based on the Eurocentric worldview, and they go, well, I don't know what you're talking about, Eurocentric worldview. Well, the Eurocentric Eurocentric worldview is Greece started everything, and they're last to the table. There's your Eurocentric worldview, and then they created, they did, they created philosophy, they created um, uh, sociology, they created math, they cre- and they're last to the game, they're last to the table. How does that reasonably make sense? But yet when I bring it into my story, now it makes sense. Oh, they took that stuff. Oh, they they killed people, took that information from the from the Egyptians who had it from the all the way back to the Babylonians, the Persians, the Medes, the, Medes, the uh, Assyrians, the, uh, the the Babylonians, the Egyptians had it going into the next phase, the next age, right? And then here comes Greece. They pop up. They steal it. They go over there. They, Alexander, the the you know they they want to conquer the world. Then Rome conquers them because the conquered. The conquerors get conquered by themselves. They fight themselves. And then now, now everybody, everybody Roman. Jesus more, G, they, 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 all of a sudden there's a white Jesus, another Jesus. I mean, another Yahweh Shai. His name turns into Jesus. All the prophets are white. Everybody white. And when you say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't really make sense how everybody is white considering the recessiveness of genetics and dominance of genetics, how does that apply? How does that work? Ah, you're racist. But now all that has changed, and the happiness is now knowing who we are. And the reward is understanding that we will gain entry based on the righteous works that we do for each other. Because, see, we've been righteously treating them, the nations, very righteously. We've been humble to them. We've sat back and we have we have endured and persevered through all of their antics, all of their evil. And now 
we can endure and persevere righteously treating our neighbor, our brother, the way we want to be treated. Right? And the way they want to be treated. How hey, hey brother, how you want to be treated? I want to be treated like this. Great. Okay. It's cool. Let's do this. Let's move. Let's let's roll, sister. It's all good. And people say, brother, sister, you talking about black people. No. Again, that's a Eurocentric worldview. And now, behold, well, let me go back to 11. And now, my son, all men that are in a state of nature, or or I would say in a carnal state, are in the gall of bitterness and in the bonds, in the bonds of iniquity. They are without the Elohim in the world, and they have gone contrary to the nature of the Elohim. Therefore, they are in a state of contrary to the nature of happiness, and that's the facts. And now, behold, is the meaning of the word restoration to take a thing of a natural state and place it in an unnatural state, or to place it in a state opposite to its nature? Now, check that out. That's why, hey, these people, a lot of these people ain't going to get it. <laughs> they just are not going to get it. They're not they're unable to cogitate the state of being that they want to be in. They're not going to be able to get it because all they know is their Eurocentric worldview. And what's that? Kill, steal, destroy. Selfishness, being over, vanities. Prosperities at the cost of others. Okay? Oh, my son, this is not the case, but the meaning of the word restoration is to bring back again evil for evil or carnal for carnal or devilish for devilish, good for that which is good, righteous for that which is righteous, just for that which is just, just for that which is just, merciful for that for that which is merciful. Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren. Deal justly, judge righteously, and do good continually. And if ye do all these things, then ye then shall ye receive your reward. Yea, 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 ye shall have mercy restored unto you again. Ye shall have justice restored unto you again. Ye shall have righteous judgment restored unto you again. And ye shall have good reward unto you again. For that which ye do send out, send, that which ye do send out shall return unto you again and be restored. Therefore, the word restoration more fully Condemn it, the sinner, and justify him not at all. Wow. That's why we're. That, that's why the Father has had us studying into multiple books so we can understand and gain confirmation in the things that in the thing that we have to do, which is what, which is obtain restoration. But within restoration, there's building blocks. To restoration, and that is righteousness, that is being just. These are actions that, you know, what, what, where is it? He says, Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful, having given mercy, merciful unto your brethren. So, dealing with your brethren mercifully, dealing with them or her justly, dealing, dealing with her, her or him in judgment righteously, and do good continually see some people some people especially the carnal ones the natural carnal people when we are doing good by them they don't understand that they can't conceive what that even looks like you know they need a superman or superwoman to come in and and save them from a burning building type good not good in righteousness which righteousness is is being good in righteousness is telling the truth, not lying. But the, when you're carnal, when you're naturally carnal, you you believe you can't believe that someone is telling the truth. All you can believe is that they tell the lie. They are lying. Why? Because carnally, that's what people do. 
Liars lie. The unjust begat unjust unjustness. Evil for evil. Carnal for carnal. So when you try to come to a carnal for carnal or an evil for evil or a devilish for devilish individual with truth, hold on, let me get to it. And take me a second, hold on. When you come to the carnal for carnal and the Hold on a sec. Let me just do this. <laughs> okay, so when when you are and this is this is something this is a this is a life lesson this is a a lesson learned because the being righteous we can't be blinded by the righteousness too we still have to have our complete spiritual armor on we can't we can't take a break from that we can't take our helmets off we can't leave our sword to the side we can't you know we can't Lord at all times. We always got to have our breastplate on at all times. We got to have our greaves on at all times. We have to be armored up, okay? So, so when when Yeah. So when we give Why did it go so far away? Goodness gracious. Wait, was it this one? Oh, I had it right there too. <sighs> okay. So when we, the righteous, who are trying to bring truth to evil for evil, or carnal for carnal, or devilish for devilish. Okay, and we're trying to bring truth into it. This is this is what it says. I'm gonna do uh, three Nephi first, three Nephi fourteen first. Okay, uh, give not that. This is three Nephi fourteen six. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Okay, interesting. Uh, then let's go to Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. There's your two witnesses. And we've been doing that when we try to come out here and give our word to these evil for evil people, these carnal people. And all they do is they just doo-doo on them. Nah, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not how it is. That's not. And we're going, okay. And now we got to go back and forth because they want to come up with John 3.16. You know, they want to deal with their Pauline doctrine, only the Pauline books. And we're like, but there's so much more. This doctor, there's, there's doctrines and covenants. Oh, you know, the Mormons are racist. Oh. They are, but the word is not theirs. The word that you heard is not theirs. That's ours. Those people are no are those people are the same evil for evil people that the Christians are, that the Muslims are, that the the Hindus, the Buddhists, all of these people are, because that's all ours. They're hindering us from our word, from our chakras, our crystals, from us gaining wisdom amongst ourselves from telling us who we are. They know. They got all our information. You cer- certainly they know. 
That's why, as you saw after 2019, and really, okay, after 2019, everything just ramped up. But that's why you saw after the X over the over Turtle Island over the U.S. Everything fell, like the mind fell, the mentality of the people fell. It just it just dropped like a rock to the bottom. And they're still trying to hold themselves up by their tell a lot vision, bringing miracles on tell, you know, still trying to show themselves to be an authority on the tell a lot vision. But we're going, nah, that ain't even how it is. We know better. If you don't vote for Kamala, it's a vote for Trump. Okay. Then so, say la, so be it. What? What? This is the first black woman. Ah, save it. She's not even that. But do what you want to do. Do it. Be complicit in it. Continue to be part of it. I tell people, just hold the line. Just hold the line. You will see that it goes, go back. You will see that if you hold the line from this madness of their complicitness, of being complicit with them, you will see that um, you will see that you will be merciful. We will be merciful dealing with ourselves because we've stopped dealing with them and we're dealing with ourselves, our own people, like-minded people. We'll be dealing with them just dealing with each other justly. We'll be dealing with, we'll be judging righteously. We'll be doing good continually because that's the last yoke. The, the last yoke off of our necks, off of the righteous's neck, it is their politics. That's it. When we no longer adhere to their politics, it's a wrap. 2025 is, is, is angling up to be one hell of a year. For the world. You know, I said, you know, I said I said last year in the fall, and I said it again early spring, this is a Jubilee year for us. This is the last one. Our Jubilees is the 49th year. So you can look it up. Their Jubilees are the 50th. This is the 70 times 70 times 70. From the time we left Egypt, this is it. This year, 24, 25 is theirs. So if you combine them and you put them together in the Jubilee years, there's going to be multiple change, not to mention that this is the age of Aquarius. We are in the 21st century. These people are still trying to fundamentally figure out, because they're evil for evil and they're carnal for carnal, they're trying to figure out how to bring the 20th century into the 21st. And we're going, no, uh, that ain't happening. You're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you or not. Because it doesn't matter to us. We know the truth. Because we're doing the work. Who's ever doing the work understands what's going on. They're all wanting to be the CEO and not have no and not and not do the work. And it's like, well, we've been doing the work. Matter of fact, we've not we've never stopped doing the work from ancient times to today. And it only makes sense at some point we have to have rest. That's why we gotta have a new body because we didn't work this one to death. That's why. That's why we can't live to three, four, five, six, nine hundred and eighty years. Because the heathen came in and worked us to death. But okay, so be it. We've worked. Now we understand we and the whole time that we worked, we had faith. We had well, we could they had it, they made us coin it hope. So we had hope. 
as we were working, which that hope turned into faith, but we were still working. Now we're working with faith and works. So what's next? Salvation. Our reward. What's our reward? Salvation. The kingdom to come. That's why I don't even get caught up with these fools no more. Like, literally, these these are, literally, he told us, literally, is a foolish nation that I'm going to put over you. And they're proud of that. And you know what? They got to leave the land. The land doesn't want them anymore. The land is doing nothing for them anymore. It's not. They tried to frack it and get oil and, and, and pillage our our oil, the blood of the earth here in the Americas. Even even down yonder in Venezuela, and they, they try to do the same thing. They just want to just just steal everything for their capitalization. And they think that we should be with them, lock, stock, and barrel through their poly tricks. And that's why you see the exchange of situation afoot. That's why we're reasoning out of matter. That's why we're dealing with so many other words. That's why we can cut them, dice them, chop them with our eyes closed. My, you know, like master kitchen, we have eyes closed, just, you know, because that word is in us because we're seeking the reward because that was what was written. And they think it's, you know, I got to cleave to you, you Negroes. I mean, does that even make sense? You, you, you would, you, you want to believe in, 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 as you call him Jesus, but not even deal with his people. Like that doesn't even make sense. That, that would be the same as us saying, okay, I'll deal with your Pope. But I don't. I hate all of you Egyptians. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do away with all. I'm, I'm sorry, Egyptian. All you Europeans. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna destroy all you Europeans. But I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna love your Pope. Does that even make sense? This is what I'm saying. Reasoning out of matter is just using logic of reason <laughs> within the within the. Uh, that's not it. Within the constraints. The constraints constraint of wisdom. So you can't reason out of matter if you ain't got no wisdom. That was the Solomon story with the two wives. He was that that signified how he reasoned the matter out. Use reason you had wisdom, but use reason within wisdom. They don't want to tell you about, oh, he was wise, you know, he did this thing, and then he did that, and yada, yada, and it was done. No, it was about how we used to think when we had our world view. Now, melanated world view, now, of course, we had people coming against us that were melanated, but for the most part, everybody that was melanated held our worldview. There was a righteousness that they could see through the works and the actions of people. It's like the Gentiles, they want to get on there and say, well, the Jews, uh, you know, transliteration, he came to his people and his people accepted him not. Of course they're going to state that. Of course that's the translation that they're going to put in there. I mean, that's reasoning out that matter. Of course they're going to do that. They're going to say that. And then was it all of his people? I think not. Wasn't the entirety of the Hebrews just dismissed Yahweh Shah? No. They don't even tell you who it was, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the converted Herodians. But because then we they manipulated the people into idolatry, more likely, more than likely, worshiping him, Yahweh Shai, or not, or worshiping man's traditions, they fell in idolatry and they had to all get punished. But I'm sure it wasn't all. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the heathen always, there I go, right? But this is the facts. The heathen always wants to overgeneralize things so that he, she can control 
the narrative. That's what they do. Oh, well, the, it's heat all over the place. Everybody is, uh, everybody is a Christian. Christian, oh, everybody needs to love Jesus. Every, no, everybody doesn't. And oversimplifying things is what they do because they don't have the opportunity to obtain wisdom or rather to obtain reason through wisdom. That is, reason is a heavy, that's, that's the battle axe that you got on your back. You got the battle axe of reason. You got the sword of the word, and you got an armor that that is unlike anything any man could ever invent. Ever. And that's why we just have to maintain, hold, toe the line, toe the line with the Father. Roll with the creator. Be in righteousness. Don't worry about these fools. These are a foolish nation who is set forth to bring duplicity to us and distraction to us. They're going to get theirs. They're going to get their reward. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm always in a state of smiles and happy. And, and you know, some probably, you got to get that smile off your face. No, I don't. I need to be excited for this time. This is our time. Why would I be frown faced, disgusted, and mad when this is our turn? That's stupid. That only means that those brothers who are frowning, swolled up, upset aren't really our people. Or the rather, the remnant of the remnant. Like we you got to Every day you got to be better. Every day, when dealing with these folks, every day you've got to. It's like you got to strengthen yourself because you're going to be dealing with evil and evil for evil, carnal for carnal. And these fools will even turn around and try to make you evil for evil, you carnal for carnal. And you're like, but wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Let's reason this matter out. Who really is evil for evil and carnal for carnal? Then they get mad. They want to curse you out. They want to send emojis to you. They Then they want to curse. They, they want to be mad. They want to be angered because you decided to toe the line, hold the line. Just like uh, Joshua that when they – was bringing down the the walls of Jericho. They were just walking, and you know all those brothers and sisters that were in that in that in, in that line going or you know going around surrounding Jericho. They were like, oh God, I'm tired. This is crazy. My back hurt. You know, it's hot. You know, I'm almost out of water. And, and he's he's yelling, "Toe the line, hold the line." You know what I'm saying? I know you do. And for all those that are new, that want to join, want to join, want to cleave, <laughs> want to cleave, want to be part of this awakening, the true awakening, not the woke isms that the heathens have re repackaged to go against our awakening. Hey, you just got to do your due diligence. You got to do your due diligence. You got to work. We working. You got to work. Ain't going to be no coming in and trying to tell us what to do and, and you know, all up in the video, you know, the producer all up in the video. No, there ain't going to be none of that. Ain't going to be no puffy here over here. And, you know, people who hear something, a word, oh, I don't like the way he said this. Well, I don't like that. You know, you can keep it moving. You can kick rocks and keep it moving. Because you are also bringing duplicity to our walk. If you don't like something, it's fair enough. You can say it. You can even you can comment on it. But don't be trying to hold no dissertation. Go to your page. Do your dissertation over there. That goes for everybody on all our stations, on all our channels, on all our words. You know, go go to yours. 
Go create a YouTube, a TikTok, and say and 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 stitch or or do a lesson on it. You know, saying what you feel needs to be said. Don't don't try to come at your brother and sister. That's why he said, and I read this part again. Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren. Deal justly. Judge righteously. Oh, I, well, let me let me time this out real quick. Oh, I don't I, well, I don't even know what you're reading from. That don't sound like the Old Testament. Oh, I don't know what you're reading from. That don't sound like the New Testament. You don't need to know. You just need to understand if you can or not. Because those that can hear it, overstand it and understand it. Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren. Deal justly, judge righteously, and do good continually. And if you do, and if ye do all these things, then shall ye receive your reward. Yea, ye shall have mercy restored unto you again. Ye shall have justice restored unto you again. Ye shall have a righteous judgment restored unto you again, and ye shall have good rewarded unto you again. For that which ye do send out, for that which you do send out, shall return unto you again. There's your karma, and be restored. Therefore, the word restore full. The word restoreth more fully, condemneth the sinner. And justify him not at all. All praises to the Elohim. Big up nation, family, much love. Brother Morial, shalom. Drive into summer with the Honda CRV and Accord, your fun to drive weekend getaway vehicles. From Honda, the 2024 Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com best value brand. So hurry in to the Honda Summer Event. For a limited time, well qualified buyers can get a 2.9% APR on a 2025 CRV or 2024 Accord. See dealer for financing details based on 2024 Consumer Choice Awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. Hey, it's Ryan Seacrest. Life comes at you fast, which is why it's important to find some time to relax. A little you time. Enter Chumba Casino. With no download required, you can jump on any time, anywhere for the chance to redeem some serious prizes. So treat yourself with Chumba Casino and play over 100 online casino-style games, all for free. Go to ChumbaCasino.com to collect your free welcome bonus. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply.